Okay, what's going on? What's going on, people? Family. Okay, look, I'm in a good space right now. I'm getting ready for the festivals, the festivals, the Feast of Tabernacles. And that begins, you all, Monday evening, all the way to the 22nd at sunset. Let's go. Get your pots on, get your fried chicken, your fried fish, your greens, your macaroni. Mm, it's going down. Okay, now, I'm going to go into the teaching like this. For those who want to know why it's important that you beg God for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, it's because you want to gain godly wisdom, not worldly wisdom, not your own wisdom, meaning carnal thinking, becoming self-righteousness. You don't want to become self-righteous. That's foolishness. That's folly to God. You want to always be on point spiritually. When you gain spiritual knowledge by God Almighty, which is godly wisdom, then you end up also knowing things of the world, meaning you become a great judge. You have a sound mind. You will begin to know how to judge things within this world with people who think they know how to judge, but don't. You will knock them right out the box. You will knock their socks off. They're like, who is her? Who is him? You see what I'm saying? Prime example. When Jesus had a discussion about how to be born again with Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was one of the lawmakers. He was a smarty pan, but totally lacked spiritual knowledge when Jesus was explaining to him. Me, I'm a chosen one. And the other true chosen ones who are a rare, you would rarely find us. We are like precious jewels. Let's just take, for example, I, I have multiple channels on here that speaks on how to be born again and other mysteries of the Torah. I get a lot of feedback on how to be born again. Why? Because people of the world who don't have the Holy Spirit in them, who have not yet been enlightened to understand the mysteries of the gospel, don't know. So they lash out with multiple verses that they think they understand and try to use it against the truth. It's impossible to use verses against verses. That's stupid. But this is the people's way of trying to prove me wrong. See what I'm saying? But they still don't understand the verses that they're using against me. See, these verses has mysteries. They have things that shouldn't be there. They have words that shouldn't be there. Misinterpreted. It's words that should be there, but it's not there. Why this is happening? Because Satan himself has deceived the scriptures. Why it has been allowed? Because God Almighty on purpose did not want the vast majority to yet understand the mysteries. The mysteries for now is only meant for the chosen ones. That's what Jesus said to his disciples. That's what, that's what he said. It's meant for you and not for them. The secrets. People, this is done on purpose. If God wanted everybody to understand the mysteries right now, he would not have dared allow Satan to tamper it. You have to understand what I'm saying. When Jesus and Nicodemus had that conversation about how to be born again, even the lawmaker himself walked away dumbfounded. Still did not understand that spiritual conversation. Hallelujah. Same for here. The same teachings that Jesus was teaching Nicodemus is the same teaching that I teach through these channels specifically on how to be born again. But yet, I'm not right. The people who have not yet received the Holy Spirit keep claiming and thinking and assuming that they're right. Who don't know the mystery. I'm now yet the chosen ones, the called out ones. Right now is being judged. 
to see if we're going to fit for the kingdom to help rule along with Christ himself. So I have to humble myself because I'm being judged right now. He's watching me on how I'm dealing with the ignorant of the world. So I have to show humility. And I have to humble myself and keep teaching the same thing over and over. Why? Because that's what God Almighty said do. He told Jeremiah, you better keep teaching. Stop praying for him, but you better keep teaching. That's what he told Jeremiah. Jeremiah said they're not listening. They, they're not listening. God said, teach anyway. Why? Because when the day of the Lord comes, which is the day of God's wrath, mm -hmm, it's coming, when he put his wrath upon those who didn't want to believe. They cannot say, did nobody tell me? Did nobody teach me? I want one They will be liars from the pits of hell because we are constantly teaching. We are constantly telling you the truth over and over, over and over. Jesus put his head down and said, oh, they just not getting it. He even told Philip, who didn't get it one time, why you so dull with it, meaning stupid. He wanted to say, you dodo. That's what it means. That was in scripture. That's why I say dodo. It means stupid. It also means dull with it. You see what I'm saying, people? If you are not yet filled, with the Holy Spirit, if you are not yet saved, you will never, you will never, never yet until the time come understand spiritual talk, spiritual conversation. You will never get it. That's the reason why I pray people. I pray to people. I pray for people to pray to God that they will understand it. Pray to God. Don't be ashamed. You better ask Solomon. He was told he was almost forced to be the king after King David, his father. Me, king? Who? I, I'm, 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 I'm like with the ladies, you know, with my brother with the ladies. And you know, he wanna ride the horses and go to war. He ain't think I'm gonna be the king. King, boom. Went on out there and he asked God Almighty, uh, uh, I need your wisdom without a doubt. Me, King? I, I, I don't know. Then he prayed for wisdom. Ooh, that's what God was waiting on him. That's what I can try to tell y'all. Go to God for his wisdom. He is willing to give it to you. He is willing. He would give you his wisdom before you get your million dollars. Think about it. You he could pray by him up praying for a million dollars. He won't give it to you. Because if he don't see fit for you, give it in his will for him to get, you're not gonna get it. But I dare you ask for his wisdom. I dare you ask for his wisdom. Now see, here's the thing with asking God for his wisdom. What are you gonna do with it? What are you gonna do with it? Are you gonna be afraid to teach the truth? Huh? Are you going to be afraid to teach the mysteries? Because let me tell you something. Once you receive the Holy Spirit and God give him his wisdom, when you receive godly wisdom, you're going to be moved. You're going to be thirsty to teach what you've never known. You're going to be enlightened. You're going to be so enlightened. It's going to be beautiful. You're going to be so enlightened with the mysteries. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, are you serious? You're going to be spilling it. You're going to have multiple channels spilling it to baby, baby. And guess what's going to happen? You're going to get darted at. Man, that ain't true. Where you get that from? I got, uh, I got 900 scriptures for that. That ain't true. That ain't true. That ain't true. And that's what happened with Jesus. The Pharisees got jealous. Who was they? He said, smart. We probably be smarter. We, we, we the lawmakers. And we, he was telling them, you ain't going to see heaven. You ain't going to make it to the kingdom. The prostitute will make it before you. Oh, that hurt them. Boom. That hurt that soul. They didn't understand that. They did not understand it because they were smarty pants. They was full of pride. And they lacked spiritual knowledge. Why? Because they were heathens. They were heathens. They couldn't get the Holy Spirit in them. They were heathens. Hypocrites. Who thought that they was favored by God. But didn't dare want to believe in who God sent. 
hands on with Christ. Huh? How dare they? And see what I'm saying? The chosen ones was just is just like Jesus. We are a rare. So when you come across a true chosen ones, you better thank God. Yeah, you better thank God Almighty. Because let me tell you something. When God realized that you are not worthy for his anointed to be in your presence and receive what he want you to receive and you neglect them, he's going to remove them. And when he remove them, you on your own. It's going to be a long time for God to decide to put another true chosen one in your life. Now, I've experienced Ali being in my life, but he messed that up because he did some things he shouldn't have done towards the end. Did I forgive him? Yes, I did. Do I want to see him? I hope he's alive, and yes, I do want to see him. You understand what I'm saying? Because he was a beautiful person. He took the time out to do God's will at the beginning before he went by his own understanding, and he lost communication with me because of his ne negligence. But I'm just trying to tell y'all, you have to be careful when you come across a true chosen ones. Remember, I'm saying true chosen ones. You got a bunch of them out there. But we are a rare. You got a bunch of jewelry stores out there with a bunch of jewelry in there. But let me tell you something. It will be a rare that you will come across that real precious diamond at that jewelry store. I'm trying to, I'm telling y'all. It will be a rare that you will come across some precious mind jewelry. All of them may be somewhat real, but a real delicate, a real true prep. They'll keep it for themselves for they sell it. I'm trying to tell you. The true chosen ones are a rare. True chosen ones are God's anointing and he is protecting them. He's hiding them for a reason. And he brings them out to certain people during a certain season for a certain reason. So those who are around a chosen one, hallelujah, you better thank God almighty. You better thank him and you better appreciate him. Shalom.